Now let us continue the discussion and uh, see more about the uh, self like commands, command syntax, okay, uh, and all those things in today's session. Hey Murli, um, this is Sai. Yeah, Sai. Quick question, we uh, go further. Uh, I'm not really sure how many of uh, you know other uh, um, students uh, have tried uh, logging into the uh, VM, but for some reason, since morning, uh, you know, I'm trying um, to get into. It is either booting after one or two minutes, and the commands are getting taken very delay in the VMs. And uh, I don't have any internet issues because my internet is 200 Mbps. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, in fact, uh, um, Ram also reported this before the session. Okay, so let me check what is happening. See, sometimes I know this. See, first of all, uh, in fact, uh, I, I should uh, set this expectation. Uh, the lab will be little bit slow. You know, the systems will be a little bit slow because uh, we are using the desktop systems and on that we have installed five uh, virtual machines. Okay, so Exadata is a heavy load and mainly more than memory, it is I.O. Okay, uh, because in the lab we have one physical disk. So all the servers, all the I.O. is uh, hitting the single disk. Okay, definitely uh, compared to your uh, uh, project systems, okay, uh, you might uh, see a delayed response, but uh, it's not that bad. Okay, it is manageable, but sometimes it will be a little bit, uh, okay, headache. I know this uh, and mainly uh, I will tell you, your internet uh, speed may be high, but uh, because we are coming over the internet. It all depends on the traffic conditions also sometimes. For example, I, I will say, uh, many times I also face this. <clears throat> if I connect during night time, it will be very faster. But uh, during peak hours, India peak hours, lay, say evening 6 o'clock, that time I see a very slow response. Okay, so that is another reason. The, the third reason could be really there could be some problem in the lab. Okay. Uh, the system uh, may be very slow in that case also you will experience that okay so let me see what exactly is the issue now okay um, yeah, yeah. That, that's fine yeah yeah, yeah. then your system uh, should be uh, able to okay give you that expected uh, performance and uh, it should be able to support all the exadata VMs okay uh, let me let me check after this class immediately I will check in front of you only and see whether the system has any problem okay or uh, see when the system is um, uh, very slow also you experience that it will connect but uh, immediately within one or two minutes your uh, connection will be lost again you have to connect so that is also one of the observed issue and these systems are running for uh, uh, okay longer time okay let me see what is happening okay maybe it is temporary issue we'll fix that okay um, so today let us see more about uh, self like commands now this slide shows you the command syntax self -like has two types of commands admin command object command okay and if you are typing object command you have to mention the object name as I discussed yesterday like database has database objects uh, cell has cell objects all the object commands are executed on objects okay so that way admin command or object command with object name then optionally you can mention options okay so admin command is the admin command uh, administrative command and object command is action performed on an object and object is okay uh, the self-cli object 
on which the command has to be performed. And uh, you can include options to filter the results, okay? Uh, like uh, Linux commands has options, right? So here also you have the options. Some rules around uh, uh, self like commands. Commands and objects and options are not case sensitive except when enclosed in quotation marks. So it is similar to SQL commands. They are not a case sensitive, but when you enclose in quotes, they are case sensitive. And when it comes to quotes, you can use a single quotes or double quotes. Either one is fine. And the commands are always executed on the cell to which you are connected, local cell. And command can be terminated with semicolon, but semicolon is optional. And command can be continued on the second line by okay using hyphen symbol at the end of the first line. So if you are typing a big command which is wrapping to the second line. So you have to end uh, the first line with hyphen command. Otherwise the command will be executed immediately. Okay. And uh, Selcly also supports command line history editing uh, similar to the modern shells like bash. So you don't need to type uh, previous command. You can just use arrow buttons to scroll through the previous commands and you can use cursor to edit uh, the commands. So this slide shows you uh, the two categories of self like commands and uh, the self like objects. Self like has admin commands and object commands. Admin commands are Okay, like your SQL plus commands like exit, help, quit, set, spool, start. Okay, so these are not really uh, useful commands maybe. Okay, um, like your SQL plus formatting commands. Then the main commands are object commands. You have create command, you have alter command, you have, okay, describe command, drop command, export, grant. Okay, there are many commands under this category. And when you execute object commands, these commands requires you to mention object. Selcly has different objects. So this slide shows you some of the important objects. Okay. So all the object commands requires you to specify the object. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, as mentioned in this slide, some of the objects cell is an object cell disk is an object okay then grid disk is an object flash cache is an object okay so like that there are many objects which you can mention in the commands then every object has attributes okay which are assigned when the object is created or altered okay you can display, you can list the attributes using describe command. Okay. And not only that, it will show you which attributes can be modifiable user, which attributes cannot be modifiable by the user. Okay. So you can use the attribute filters. Okay. In uh, list command to list. Uh, okay. Uh, um, the uh, results as per your specific requirements. Okay, we'll see this. For example, this slide shows you describe a command on an object called a cell disk. Cell disk is an object, so we are using describe a command. So it is showing the attributes like name, comment, creation time, device name, okay, like that. These are the attributes and uh, in the next column, it is showing you which attributes can be modifiable. Okay, so out of all these attributes, you can modify only name and the comment. Other attributes are fixed, you cannot uh, modify them. So like that, for every object, you can use the describe command to see the attributes and uh, 
to understand which attributes can be modifiable. Then uh, you can use a list command to display the attributes under their current values. Okay, and the list is the most commonly used uh, command uh, during the initial uh, practices. So this slide shows you how to use a list command. Okay, uh, on various objects. List cell. Cell is an object. So for that cell. It will show you all the attributes under their current uh, settings. Then cell disk okay, is an attribute. Physical disk is an attribute. Okay? And uh, for anything, if you want a detailed uh, display, you can uh, say detail at the end of the object. Okay? Like list cell detail. List physical disk detail like that. And in list command, this is the syntax of the list command. You can use where class to filter the results also. Like a list lun where disk type equal to hard disk. List lun or list cell disk where disk type equal to flash disk. Okay, so you can use where class in list command to filter the uh, results. Then, cellcly has reserved words. This slide shows you all the reserved words. So if these reserved words are used in commands, they must be enclosed in quotation marks. Okay. So that is about uh, uh, cellcly commands, the syntax, the rules around the commands and the reserved words. Now, next uh, utility is declay. Declay, distributed command line utility. Again, declay is also installed on every cell server. But before using declay, it needs some initial setup and the configuration. Okay. So we have an exercise, we have a lab exercise uh, to do that. Declay can be used to run commands on multiple cells. Okay. Facilitates centralized management. So you can use a declay to execute uh, the same command on multiple cells parallelly. Instead of logging into every cell and uh, executing the command individually, you can configure declay and from one of the node, you can fire the command to execute this command on multiple cells. Declay can be used to run cell commands. Okay. And not only cell commands, you can even run operating system commands with the declay. And you can even copy files with the declay. Okay. Suppose on a real uh, full rack machine, you have 14 storage servers. Suppose you want to copy a file to all the 14 storage servers. Okay. You can use a declay to copy this file. With one command, it will copy to all the storage servers. Instead of you connecting to every server individually and copying that file. Okay. 14 times. You can use declay. So declay uh, supports more commands. It supports all the self like commands. Additionally, you can run operating system commands also and you can copy files. So that way it is very useful for uh, centralized management. This slide shows some examples of declay. Assuming that we have configured uh, uh, declay, the initial setup has been done. You can use a declay to execute uh, commands on multiple cells. So the first example shows you how to use a declay to run list cell command, right? On these three cells, cell one, cell two, cell three. So the syntax, if you see declay hyphen C, so then you need to specify the cell names, each cell name separated with comma. Then cell cly command that you want to 
execute. Cell cli hyphen E, the command list cell. So it will show you the status of all the three cells now. This command will be executed on all the three cells and the display will be shown to you immediately. The result will be shown to you. Then the second example uses a file called group file whose name is my cells. Instead of typing the cell name every time on the command line, you can okay create a group file and this file will have the names of all the cells. And this group file can be passed on as an argument to the decli. So decli hyphen g my cells. So again the same command cell cli hyphen e list cell. Okay, so only difference between the first command and this command is first command I am typing the cell names individually. Second, I am, second command I am not typing the cell names. I am passing the file. This file has the cell names. Okay, like in expdp you have pair file. Instead of typing the export parameters on the command line every time you can create a pair file, include the parameters in that file and pass this pair file as an argument to your expdp or impdp. So it is similar to that. And the third command shows you how to execute operating system commands. So here I want to see whether all the storage servers, okay, the time is synchronized or not, running the same time or not. So in real time you will have 14 storage servers. Instead of you connecting to every storage server individually and executing date command and checking the date and the time, you can use a decli from one of the cell and uh, execute the command. So that way decli is very useful for centralized administration. From one cell you can execute commands on multiple cells. Okay, so let me show you um, few commands on the system now. Let me log in and uh, so that I can also check your issue. Yesterday I was a uh, little bit busy. I okay, I, I could not spend the time on our this thing. I'm also trying some different setup with uh, SSD storage for faster access. <coughs> So I will connect to SAI's server because you reported some issue. Let me check from my side. 130, right? Okay. So you have Xeon on your laptop or SAI? You tested this uh, or any any of your friends has this? Yeah, yeah. I, I have, my brother has a uh, macro. Uh -huh. It has a Xeon uh, E5. Okay. Okay. But I don't know cost perspective. <laughs> if it is single oh, that, system, you can afford, but in the lab I need many systems. <laughs> Right, right. But uh, you can, you know, if you go with the hexa-core with that and uh, you can you can host probably, you know, 20 VMs, 20 to 30 VMs on it without any issue. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Can you can you ping me that model or whatever? Uh, I, I will do some research on that. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Or uh, show me that website, the URL, wherever you can find those details, I will go through that. Sure. Okay. In fact, I am trying to purchase a new uh, servers for Exadata. The current servers are saturated actually. 
So okay. new infrastructure I'm planning, but uh, again I have to see budget also. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Got it. I mean, you know, this one I don't have any complaint. The only thing is, you know, on um, uh, um, I know, you know, that tells me busy because you generally quickly respond to my emails, right? So I did not see response. That means I thought you are busy. Yeah, yes. All I want is so that uh, yeah, I can build on my own so that I don't need to, you know, even use these, uh, you know, the uh, yeah. Old, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do one thing if you want to build on your own. Yeah. I would suggest it is up to you. I would suggest you to do this after that course because it is very okay. lengthy and a complicated process. Okay. And it might take long, long time. Okay. Maybe one week time or. Okay, three four days time minimum, and you may get into different issues during the setup and the configuration. Okay, so it is always advisable to do this after the course. By that time, you will have more knowledge about the exa data, and you can even easily troubleshoot and uh, quickly set up that. Yeah, no problem. Okay, but it is up to you. If you want to, if you have time, you can do now. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is my passion. I build a lot of systems, uh, mm -hmm. especially in the virtual environment. Uh, so yeah. that's it. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Mm. Okay. So I am also facing the same issue. It is in the system must be slow. Then who complained? Ram one one five. Okay. Let me see. So if this is happening, um, the basic check that you can do, I, I'm sure everybody knows. Okay, first uh, try to ping to your IP. Okay, see the okay latency. Suppose 192, 168, 1.115. That will tell you a little bit uh, more. 115. Okay, so it says a destination host unreachable. Maybe. There is some network problem. Okay, first of all, it is not even pinging, so you cannot obviously SSH. But if you try to ping to Sai system 130, right? It is pinging, right? So, so that means you should be able to SSH now. And if you are disconnecting immediately, the system may be experiencing the yeah. uh, issues. Okay. Yeah, there is an issue. If you use the ping uh, dash t yeah. and the IP address, it will break. Yeah, yeah. Some, some in between point. it will show you timeout. Yes, yeah. That is what is happening. So some packets may drop under timeout. Okay, yeah. extended uh, statistics. Yeah. Yeah. So it's also not very stable. You were. Uh, Kind of yeah, first I thought maybe you have some issues because of the rain. I, I heard a lot of rain, right? Yeah. Now. But, so I, I, some. You don't know. <laughs> okay. Anyway, my team will come now, 8 o'clock, IST, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. The support team is available. So I will ask them to see what is happening in the lab. Okay. But by far, we never had any okay major issues with the system connectivity or performance. Okay, it is manageable though it is not very fast. It is reasonable and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yesterday, yesterday it was fine. No, no issues. I mean, I checked right. So hmm. only today uh, there must be some issue. Right. Uh, it is timing out. Um, hmm. So yeah, yeah. Just let me take few more minutes and see with other servers. One sure. time is assigned to Praveen. At least if I can connect it to one server, I can show all these demos. One time. Hmm.
So in fact, in the lab, some systems are connected to one switch, another other systems are connected to a different switch. Sometimes uh, switch level issues also will uh, okay create these kind of issues. We may have to restart the switch because these switches are not uh, okay the data center level kind of switches which need to be restarted every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Again, I got. So let us log into SSH to the storage server, one of the storage server. And start the cell play. So you can simply type help, okay, you will see, you can get the online help and the various commands, okay. And if you want to get the help about a particular command, help a list list is a command initially we will be using list command very often so it will show you uh, the usage the syntax of the list command so that way you can get online help <coughs> then you can use um, Then it is oh. okay. Looks like this is okay. Problem with every system. Let me. Let me into my team. I am sure uh, you must have noted we have a support group uh, you can reach them over Skype the Skype ID is Euclid.support you can reach them over mail again the mail ID is Euclid.support at the rate EuclidIT.com okay so any issues such issues you ping to them in the Skype or send a mail and uh, you can mail me also, but uh, most of the time I may not be uh, immediately looking into your issues because I am out of office. I will be somewhere else with the different things. Okay. So whenever I see, I will quickly respond, but uh, always uh, keep uh, that to our uh, support team. Send that to our support team. Yeah. Okay. So let us continue with the class so in that case. Okay. Uh, because otherwise we'll maybe wasting time like this with uh, connectivity issues today. Now, next concept is uh, storage concepts, exadata storage concepts. Now you know exadata uses two types of storage. One is the traditional hard disk based storage, then flash disk storage which is your SSD okay so starting from version 2 exadata is using flash storage in version 1 there was no flash storage but from version 2 way back to 2009 onwards flash storage is available in exadata so Oracle has reached to a stage where uh, it is nowadays shipping storage servers entirely with uh, flash storage. So those kind of storage servers are called as EF, extreme flash storage servers. Okay. 
and the other servers are called as high capacity storage servers which has both uh, hard disk storage as well as flash disk storage so customers can choose between high capacity storage servers which has hard disk storage as well as flash disk storage or the second storage server is extreme flash storage server which has only flash storage okay so that is the concept now exadata storage server uses various objects right uh, these storage objects are primarily your physical disk object flash disk cell disk grid disk asm disks okay so these are the various storage objects uh, used in exadata referred to in exadata um, so let us see what are these uh, fundamental objects you know physical disk it is the hard disk on the storage cell each storage server has 12 number of physical disks okay all with the same capacity and uh, same characteristics so from version 1 till version 7 which is x6 each storage server has exactly 12 physical disks 12 is fixed and the difference is version to version Oracle may include okay uh, bigger disks for example in the latest version which is x6 the disk capacity is 8 terabyte okay because nowadays we are getting 8 terabyte disks but if you go back to few years at that time there were no 8 terabyte disks so the older versions may support disks with less capacity maybe 2 terabyte okay or 1 gigabyte or 1 terabyte 500 GB disks like that okay but the 12 is fixed next object is flash disk so these flash disks are present only on the storage server not on the database server okay and uh, these flash disks are attached as PCIe cards not as the hard disks which are behind the controller okay so they are directly attached to the system bus over PCIe slots and again each storage server has 16 flash disks or flash modules actually there will be four slots on the board and in each slot you will put one flash card and each flash card has four flash modules so four into four is total 16 flash modules will be there again the difference is version to version the flash module size will be varying but the number is fixed in okay. next cell disk so once you have physical hard disk and physical flash disks there is some logical objects there are some logical objects created on the physical objects so there is some logical abstraction so in this logical layer you will have two more objects called a cell disk and a grid disks so phys hard disk and a flash disk are physical cell disk and a grid disks are logical okay on every disk whether it is hard disk or flash disk okay hard disk or flash disk exadata storage server creates something called as cell disk okay and in fact every hard disk or every flash disk is automatically detected by the storage server as a LUN okay LUN LUN is the storage term right logical unit number or logical unit so you have 12 hard disks that means at exadata storage level you have 12 LUNs then you have 16 flash disks okay that means at uh, 
hexadata storage server level, you have 16 LUNs, right? On every LUN, we create a cell disk, okay? We create cell disk. Cell disk is a logical disk created on every physical disk and every flash disk. Cell disks are created, okay? Cell disks created on the physical disks are named as CD, okay? The disk number 0, 01, 00, 0, 0, 01 up to 0, 011 and uh, cell name. So this is the standard naming convention used for cell disks. Right? Then cell disks created on the flash disks are named as FD. Again, the same convention. So if the cell disk name is starting with the CD, it is created on the hard disk. If the cell disk starting, the name is starting with FD, it means it is created on the flash disk. Okay? So that is the mapping. You have hard disk. Every hard disk is detected inside the storage server as a LUN. On a LUN, we create cell disk. And the next, on a cell disk, we create a grid disks. Okay? So grid disk is again a logical disk created on a cell disk. And on one cell disk, you can create multiple grid disks. Okay? Again, how many grid disks you will create depends on how many ASM disk groups you are going to create ultimately. Okay? So, can be created on, these grid disks can be created on hard disk based cell disks or flash disk based cell disks. Okay? So, next you have ASM disk. And ASM disk is nothing but a grid disk in Exadata storage server. Which is, okay, every grid disk is visible to ASM as an ASM disk. And you know, grid disk is used to create ASM disk groups. And uh, once you create a disk group, your storage clients, like a database clients, can use the ASM disk groups to store the data. Okay. So this is the hierarchy of the objects in Exadata. You have hard disk or flash disk. On a hard disk, we create a cell disk. Or on flash disk, we create a cell disk. And once the cell disk is created, we create grid disks on the cell disk. And these grid disks are visible to ASM as ASM disks. Okay. So let us understand more about these uh, okay, disks in Exadata. So if you see uh, the storage server, every storage server has 12 disks exactly, right? 12 hard disks. Now this diagram shows you the disk layout on the storage server. You have 12 disks. Disk 0, disk 1, disk 2, disk 3, so on, disk 11. Now if you see the layout of the disks, the first two disks, on the first two disks, in every storage server, there is some portion called as system area. Okay? Some of the disk space is reserved and called as system area. So this system area is used to store, to install operating system binaries, cell software binaries, and to store alert and metric repository. And this size is 29.125 GB, approximately 29 GB. Okay. So on the first two days, 29 GB is reserved for operating system binaries cell software binaries and uh, alert and uh, metric repository. 
the same amount of space okay is used for dbfs db on the remaining 10 days okay so on the remaining 10 days again the same amount of space that is 29.125 is used to create a, a disk group called dbfs dg okay so we have a concept called dbfs so in exadata by default dbfs is implemented okay so for that this space is used okay so we'll learn more about dbfs at a very later stage okay at that time you will appreciate why okay this space is reserved so now once this is done every disk has the same amount of free space right the same amount of free space now let us see how the initial installation and the configuration uses this free space okay during the initial installation and configuration oracle uses a utility called one command utility to install and configure exadata and one command utility automates the installation and the configuration of the exadata database machine so the one command utility okay creates two grid disks on this free space okay one is okay named in the form of data second is named in the form of reco okay because ultimately the entire storage is used to configure three disk groups okay one is dbfs dg second is data third is reco okay so for dbfs dg 29 gb is used out of the remaining space 40% is used for data dg 60% is used for fast recovery area that is reco named as reco okay so the one command process creates three grid disks on each disk one is used for dbfs dg and this grid disk size is 29 gb the remaining free space is split into 40 60 ratio 40 is going into data 60 is going into reco so with this formatting every disk inside the storage server has three grid disks okay as shown in this slide and it is same on every storage server okay so by default the split is like this only again there is another split that can be done by one command process instead of 42 data it can assign 82 data 22 reco okay 22 reco so we'll we'll see this in the next topic y40 y60 r y80 y20 and all that okay for now all that you need to understand is on the real exadata box every hard disk okay on every hard disk oracle creates one cell disk and on every cell disk there are three grid disks created okay <coughs> now this is what i was telling you the storage objects under their relations at operating system level at a hardware level you have a disk right so this disk can be hard disk or flash disk now inside storage server every hard disk or flash disk is detected as a LUN and on the LUN we create a cell disk 
okay up to this there is one to one mapping every disk is mapped to a lun every lun we create a cell disk now once a cell disk is created right you create a grid disks on the cell disk and you can create a multiple number of grid disks and each grid disk is treated as an asm disk so once you create the grid disk the grid disks are visible inside the asm as an asm disk okay so that is how you provision the storage for exadata you add the hard disk to the storage server it is detected as lun on lun you need to create a cell disk on cell disk you need to create a grid disks then these grid disks are visible inside asm as asm disk so once asm disk is visible you can create asm disk groups and uh, asm clients can use this disk group to store data okay. so another uh, yeah please go ahead yeah so this is uh, you know the lower level uh, the physical disk is uh, i mean if i understood disk is representing a, a physical disk whether it is a flash or a physical i mean a regular disk right correct so that means at the end state is it going to be like a disk equivalent to you know uh, in a normal storage i can carve out a lun i mean uh, one day I, I can carve out luns meaning nothing but a partition yeah. Uh, multi multiple lumps on a, a, a single disk or a bunch of you know RAID disk, right? Mm -hmm. So here, is it going to be a one disk, one ASM disk, or one disk can be created as multiple lumps and uh, those can be added as uh, different disks to ASM ah. level? Here, one disk is treated as one lump. One physical disk is treated as one lump. And so, uh, yeah, good. on a LUN, we create a cell disk. Again, once one LUN is equivalent to one cell disk. Right? And yeah. on a cell disk, you can create multiple grid disks. Oh, okay, okay. That, that part I missed. Okay. N now, from the grid disk, I would convert into a regular way, like, yeah. you know, each disk is a, 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 a LUN and I can add to different uh, disk groups, right? Correct, correct. Each grid disk okay. can be, okay, part of different uh, disk groups. Great, okay, yeah. got it. Thank you. So this uh, dotted uh, things are within the storage server, okay? So if you see, these objects are within the storage server layer. Disk is at the OS level, at the hardware level. Then again, ASM disk is within ASM. Okay. So these three are your storage server objects, logical abstraction of the physical disk. So in other words, this is another uh, representation of the same fact. You have physical disks which are treated as a LUN, right? On that we create a cell disk and on a cell disk we create a grid disk and each grid disk, okay, on a cell disk you can create a, a single grid disk or multiple grid disks. And each disk grid disk is treated as an ASM disk. And with that, you can create ASM disk group. So ultimately, each grid disk is consumed inside the ASM disk group. Okay. Okay. So, um, Murali, so with this, I mean, maybe you are going to cover, but, uh, you know, stop me if it is going to cover. Yeah. So here, do we have to enable the redundancy at the ASN level or the actual LUNs also uh, in the extra data can be raided? Raid 
um, no these lungs are hard days doesn't have raid actually okay inside the storage okay. server so when you create disk groups ASM disk groups then I need to go redundancy redundancy right. you need to mention the redundancy correct got it yeah okay thank you so now actually this is hard disk the relation okay let me be very specific I'm sorry I'm modifying during the class itself I should have done this before to bring in more clarity I am doing these changes on the fly now the disk can be hard disk or flash disk right so when you use a hard disk this is the hierarchy of the objects every hard disk is detected as a LUN inside the storage server on every LUN we create a cell disk there is create a cell disk command okay so with that we create cell disk then on every cell disk you can create a multiple number of grid disks or a single grid disk uh, once a grid disk is created it is exposed to ASM as an ASM disk so within ASM you create ASM disk groups utilizing all these grid disks so that is how the disk space is provisioned now instead of hard disk you may use a flash disk also right you may use flash disk or flash storage so in that case how this flash disk or flash storage is used because oracle can use a flash storage uh, in uh, different ways okay hard disk is ultimately used as an asm disk to create asm disk groups now when it comes to flash storage again every flash disk is exposed to storage server exadata storage server as a LUN on the LUN again we create cell disk now this cell disk can be used in two different ways one is the regular on a cell disk we create grid disk and this grid disk is exposed to ASM as ASM disk and you can use it to create ASM disk groups to store your data okay but Oracle doesn't do this by default instead all the flash storage is uh, configured as flash cache and the flash lock okay so that means on the flash storage Oracle doesn't create any grid disks and uh, Oracle will not use it to create ASM disk groups. Instead, there are two features in Exadata storage server called as smart flash cache, smart flash lock. Okay. So by default, the flash storage is used to implement these two features. Okay. So that is the concept. If you want, if you don't want to use these features, you can use the flash storage to create grid disks and then use these grid disks to create ASM disk groups to store your data. But by default, the initial one command process configures all the flash storage as flash cache and flash log. That means you will not have any grid disk based on the flash storage. You will have grid disks based on the hard disk only. But anytime you can drop the flash cache and the flash log and use the flash storage to create a grid disks. In the lab, we are going to do all these things. Okay? We by default again I implemented a flash cache and a flash log in the lab you will break that you will create grid disks on the flash storage and create ASM disk groups again you will break them and again uh, implement a flash cache and a flash log so all these things 
okay we are going to practically implement in the lab okay so that is the con i know um, initially it will be a little bit confusing because uh, traditionally we are used to database related things but these are purely storage related concepts which may be confusing at times okay again another representation you have flash based run on which we create cell disk and uh, this cell disk can be used for two purposes to create grid disk or to create flash cache and flash log okay so if you want you can implement both some storage can be used to create grid disk and the remaining space the remaining storage can be used to implement a flash cache and a flash log so it is very flexible when it comes to flash storage but by default the entire flash storage available is used to configure flash cache and a flash log there are no grid disks created on the flash storage if you want you can create them and use to store your data is this uh, clear or any confusion so for the uh, let's say you know we we go with the you know flash cache and flash log so the way how it is going to be used by the database is that a specialty of the accelerator yes actually flash cache and flash log are unique features of exadata got it okay uh, but nowadays uh, the other storage servers also implementing similar features like flash cache is present in many storage servers nowadays but the way that flash cache works is very different from the way exadata flash cache works okay exadata flash cache is more intelligent okay and uh, that way it is very different from the flash cache concept in third party storage servers we'll see we, we have dedicated topics for flash cache and flash log so at that time we will see more details and uh, what is that intelligence compared to other storage servers <coughs> okay so can i move forward or anybody has confusion you want me to repeat this once again i can do that but this concept is very very important for you the entire foundation is laid on these concepts don't hesitate okay if you did not understand this feel free to ask me i can repeat this a number of times if you want okay so if no issue then we will move forward but still if you has any confusion at later stage also free feel free tomorrow day after tomorrow any time you ask me i can repeat this topic if required now uh, this uh, slide shows you uh, with a little bit animation now in this slide we have two storage servers also called as cells exadata cell exadata cell for simplicity each cell has three disks shown in this diagram in real time you have 12 disks right now you have your database server accessing the storage servers and the storage server manages the disks now each disk each hard disk or each flash disk is treated as a cell disk right so ultimately the hard disk or flash disk 
is treated as a cell disk inside the exadata storage server. Cell disk is the entity that represents a physical disk residing within the exadata storage cell. Okay, and uh, hard disk is automatically detected and uh, discovered and activated as a LUN inside the storage server. And on the LUN, we need to create a cell disk. There are commands to create a cell disk and to create a grid disk. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Next, grid disk. Okay. Now, once the cell disk is created, on the cell disk, we create a grid disk, like this. On your cell disk, you can create a multiple number of grid disks. So this slide is showing you, okay, two grid disks. Red portion is one grid disk, blue portion is another grid disk. So on every <coughs> disk and on every cell, this is done, okay? Cell disks are logically partitioned into grid disks. Cell disks are logically partitioned into grid disks. How many grid disks? It depends on how many ASM disk groups you are going to implement on this storage. Suppose at ASM level, ultimately you are going to create two disk groups. Then on every cell disk, you create two grid disks only. Or, suppose you are going to create four ASM disk groups. Then on every cell disk, you will create four grid disks. So, ultimately it is driven by how many ASM disk groups you are going to create at the storage level. And uh, on the real exadata, the entire storage is used to configure three ASM disk groups. DBFSDG, data, reco. Data under reco is used for database storage. Data stores uh, database files, CRD files. Reco stores recovery related files like backups, archive log files flash log files. DBFSDG is used to implement a feature called DBFS, database file system. Okay. So that way <coughs> the storage is divided into three disk groups. Grid disk is the entity allocated to ASM as an ASM disk. Minimum of one grid disk per cell disk. So on a cell disk, a minimum of one disk, one grid disk has to be created. And you can create multiple grid disks. Next. This is what you are referring to, uh, Sai. Mirroring. Okay, redundancy. So once uh, ASM disks are available, once the grid disks are created, each grid disk is uh, treated as an ASM disk. And uh, we use these grid disks to create ASM disk groups. For example, in this slide, the red portion is a grid disk. Each red portion is a grid disk. Nothing but ASM disk. So we use all these grid disks to create ASM disk group. Okay? ASM striping evenly distributes I.O. across the disk group. So ASM has inbuilt striping mechanism. So the data will be striped across all the disks inside the disk group. Right? Then ASM mirroring is used to protect against disk failures or cell failures. So the mirroring is implemented at the ASM level. There is no hardware level RAID implemented inside the storage server. 
Now, for example, you see this uh, slide. Now, once uh, ASM disk group is created, Exadata automatically creates failure groups inside each disk group. And all the grid disks belonging to a particular cell will be in one failure group. So that even if the entire cell fails, you have the data accessible. So your database will not have any impact even if the entire cell has a failure. So all the grid disks coming from a particular cell will be in one failure group. So now you have two cells, right? When you create the disk group, it will have two failure groups. The grid disks coming from the first cell will be in one failure group. The grid disks coming from another cell will be in a different failure group. Now we know ASM uses failure groups to place the mirror extent, right? Mirror extent will always be placed in a different failure groups. So that the failure of all the disks in the failure group can be tolerated. The simultaneous failure of the disks in a failure group can be tolerated. So that is how failure groups are implemented inside the exadata. So this is very very important concept to understand the high availability of exadata. The same in another representation. Any doubts on this part? I'm good. Yeah. So this is same representation. Now, when it comes to Exadata, there are some auto disk management features inside Exadata. Okay. These features are not available on non-Exadata platforms. So what are those auto disk management concepts? Now, whenever a grid disk status is changed to offline, the corresponding ASM disk is taken to offline inside ASM. Okay, at storage level, if you offline a grid disk, at ASM level, that ASM disk is automatically offline by ASM. So you don't need to manually offline it inside ASM. Then again, in the storage level, inside the storage server, if you make, if you bring that grid disk online and it is automatically online inside ASM, you don't need to manually do that. That is one automation built into Exadata. Second automation is, Inside the storage server, you can activate, inactivate the grid disk. So whenever you inactivate a grid disk inside the storage server, the corresponding ASM disk will be automatically offline inside ASM. You don't need to manually do that. Once again, whenever you activate that grid disk inside the storage server, the corresponding ASM disk will be online automatically inside ASM. Okay. Then the third automation is if a disk fails, this is one of the common failure in real, okay, in real time also. Whenever a disk fails, you will replace that disk, right, with the new disk. And once you attach the new disk, Exadata storage server automatically creates a cell disk, automatically create a grid disks and uh, these grid disks are automatically added to the disk group 
without any intervention from the user. Okay. So that way, whenever a hard disk fails, it is very simple. Just to replace it, let it, uh, uh, let everything happen automatically. Okay. So these are some auto disk uh, management features available only on Exadata platform. And we have a lab exercise to practically verify all these things actually. Okay. So it will uh, be tested in our lab also. Now to implement all these uh, automatic features, there are two additional background processes added to ASM instance in the form of XDMG, which is the manager process, okay, and uh, XDWK, which is the worker process. So these two processes implemented implements all these auto disk management features on Exadata platform. So this is some concept related to the storage server. Just a conceptual overview. Okay, later we will see the administration part of the storage server. So that's it for today. Any doubts on today's class? If no doubts, I will show you the demos that you can start and uh, practice up to now. So whatever we covered so far, <laughs> slowly becoming complicated. Yes, that is uh, natural and normal, right? Because we are going deep in deep into the subject, right? But I will try to make it uh, as simple as possible. You also put your full 100% attention uh, and concentration when I am explaining. And uh, feel free to ask, uh, okay, uh, any doubt or any clarification or if you did not understand any concept. You have to come forward and uh, utilize that uh, opportunity. <laughs> So we can, you can easily practice up to seven, okay? Whatever we discussed covers all these practices. And uh, every practice has step-by-step, -step, uh, um, okay, guide. You just execute those commands, observe the output, try to correlate and understand uh, how it is uh, working inside the machine. Uh, let me see some, in which case we can use this flash cache and flash log for database. Okay. Uh, see, this flash cache and uh, flash log are unique features of Exadata. Flash cache caches frequently accessed data inside the storage server. Okay. And the flash log is used by your log writer to write a redo log data. Okay. So using flash cache and flash log, your IPO, your IO performance is improved a lot. Okay. Without them also, you can run the database machine. But when you implement a flash cache and flash log, your IO performance is much, much better. Okay. So, just to wait for a few more uh, classes, we will come to flash cache, flash log topic, then we will discuss at length what are those and uh, benefits of flash cache and uh, flash log. Yeah, certification, Exadata certification, basically you have only, nowadays it is only one certificate, one certification, sorry, okay. Uh, if you want, I can show you some slide related to certification. Anyway, that comes at the end of the course, but uh, you may plan early if you know the things. Basically, now even though we are talking about the latest version, which is X6, certification is available up to 
x5 version only okay but uh, you are learning the latest version x6 any reference i make is related to x6 version so with that you should be able to create uh, clear uh, previous certification also so basically there are two certifications uh, for x3 and x4 and uh, for x5 okay and uh, this is expert certificate only one certificate now if you want to go for x5 version certificate which is the latest available certificate its exam code is 100070 okay and uh, this is still in beta actually x5 is still in beta okay and uh, its price as of now in indian rupees is 3500 3300 only it is very uh, less because it is still in beta but if you want to go for x3 x4 based certification the price is 10000 rupees okay and you will have 150 minutes time and uh, 90 questions are all multiple choice only so very simple only one certificate uh, x3 x4 based uh, certificate or x5 based uh, certificate x5 is still in beta so if you want more details this is the url you can explore in terms of usd and all that you can show you education.oracle.com slash certification okay sai is it clear you got the details yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't I don't think uh, there is any prerequisite to have the uh, Oracle instructor led or right. course right <laughs> luckily as of now there is no such a requirement yeah that does good yeah before the, you put uh, such thing you better go for certification if you are planning yeah 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 and uh, if you can you know uh, I posted two questions so uh, just look into if you can either you know give me if you want to talk I can give you a call or you know if uh, you can, uh, reply to my email yeah see once you log into Oracle cloud right e-delivery platform you type exa here just okay you can search with exa then it will show you many things okay exa related products now if you come down it will show you exa data storage server software this is the latest and the greatest okay so you can choose any release and uh, download that okay 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 so in the lab i am using this 112321 I am trying to compile 12C, 12 based uh, this thing, but uh, there are many issues in uh, 12C related thing, especially in the lab environment, maybe on the real hardware it might be smooth, but in the lab it is becoming challenge. Okay, and uh, is there a, I mean, um, installation steps that you can, you know, share? Uh, for me to go ahead and uh, I've already got uh, the you know virtual boxes and uh, VM VMware version you know running, mm. uh, so I can use uh, VM I mean virtual box uh, or virtual box. Yeah. So yeah, if you can you know uh, send mm. me some kind of high level. Uh, uh, I will I will text. send you some link. Uh, there are some sites which will talk about the step by step process. Okay. Sure. Uh, as such, I don't have any documented uh, procedure because I know this procedure uh, for quite long time. <laughs> but I don't have a specific document. But I can share that uh, link with you. You can find a step-by-step -step process there. And if you face any yeah. problem, I will I will be there for you. Great. Yeah, that will be great. Yeah. And the final question I need to talk to you, um, the one I'm... Um, very serious about it, so um, either I can give you a call or whichever. Uh, okay, that is related to rack and the Golden Gate, right? Yeah. 
Okay. See, Rack and Golden Gate, we have standard course actually. You, you can go through our website to download the brochures and see the course or topics. But if you are looking something beyond that, we need to discuss. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, um, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm looking into, probably, you know, if you, if you talk, then you'll know what I'm looking for. So okay. let me, you know. Uh, maybe can we talk in the evening? Uh, I need to rush to sure, office sure. now. No problem. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Evening uh, yeah. we can talk, no problem. That is your morning. Yeah, yeah. no problem. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. No problem. Bye. Others, any more questions? Only uh, Praveen. Yeah, Praveen. Yeah, like uh, uh, regarding the cell days, uh, like uh, out of cell disk, uh, we make the ASM disk, right? Yeah, on every cell disk, you create a grid disk. Grid uh, disk grid is disk. nothing but your ASM disk. Yeah, so you mentioned that there is no hardware redundancy. Yeah. So like, we implemented the software. So for every disk group, there is a, like if, if you go for redundancy, there will be a failure group. Right, right, exactly. So the redundancy so, is implemented inside ASM. So like uh, 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 actual uh, actual group is on one LAN and fail group is on another LAN. Um, it is not a LAN actually. Uh, the failure group at uh, cell level actually. All the grid is belonging to one cell will be in one failure group. Okay. Okay, suppose uh, all the grid disks from first cell will be in one failure group. And uh, all the grid disks from the second cell will be in a different failure groups. Okay. So for every cell, there is a failure group. Okay, what, uh, what I mean to ask is like uh, if both uh, failure group and actual group, if they fail at the same time, how do you like uh, ensure high availability? Is it through RAC? It is, uh, no, no, storage level failures, okay, are okay, taken care with the ASM redundancy. So when you create okay. a disk group, you need to mention normal redundancy or high redundancy. Yeah. Based on that, yeah. your ASM extents will be mirrored. Mm -hmm. Okay. By side. Okay. Okay. And uh, node level, database server level failures are taken care with RAC. If one node fails, you will have another node and another instance. Okay. That way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Gangadhar. So, don't we have any exadata the external redundancy by any chance? No, no, no. On exadata, you cannot use external redundancy. Okay, because there is no hardware level RAID implemented. Okay. If suppose a cell failures, then only the fail group will take care or uh, what will happen to that particular cell? Maybe the failure group will have the data. Correct, right. No. See, you have other okay. cells, right? You have other cells. Yeah. The mirror extends will be on other cells. So that way, you have data available to you without any problem. Yeah. Suppose your cell fails in the one fail group. And some the data which is on that particular cell will be lost permanently, and yeah, yeah. the failure is available. Yeah. But yeah. how we are treating the data particular cell which is got lost? No, no, no. See, if if the cell is lost, for that data on that cell, you have mirror data on the different cell. Yeah. So ASM will read that mirror data now. Okay, and we will replace the whole. Uh, the failure cell, right? 
right right after that you have to replace uh, the cell failed cell or fix that issue then once again it will build the redundancy from the mirror copies okay so automatically from the failed group it will correct that Yes, yes. It will automatically build that mirror copy again once you add that cell back. Okay. And what is the minimum? That means uh, we need to have this uh, redundancy level normal or high? What is the uh, basic? You can use. You can use. See, for uh, mission critical applications, Oracle recommends high. Okay. Otherwise, you can go with the normal. But uh, what you need to understand is uh, the. Effective usable space will reduce with the high redundancy, right? Yeah. So that is uh, another point you need to be aware. Okay. High is recommended for uh, mission critical systems. Otherwise, normal. When we have the machine, uh, generate a machine with flash storage and uh, hard disk both, then how we can replace this flash and uh, uh, physical? In which cases we can use the flash and in which cases we use the real and this one, ASM. Yeah, you so can physical. see, as I told you earlier, by default, flash storage is configured as flash cache and flash lab. Okay? To improve your I.O. performance. Or, yeah. you can use flash storage to create ASM disk groups and to store data. Or you can use it, you can use for both purpose. Some flash can be used to create ASM disk groups. The remaining flash can be used to implement a flash cache and a flash lab. Okay. And uh, do we have any uh, more speed uh, R balance for this particular ASM? Normally is zero to eleven, right? And, no, that, that, so is, that is. That is same. That is same on Exadata also. Because it is not Exadata feature, it is ASM feature. Yeah. It is same. Okay. Because we have flash storage, right? Suppose if we use flash storage, then it will be more... No, if it is on the flash storage, the rebalancing happens quickly because of the performance. Flash storage is yeah. uh, high performing storage, right? So your rebalance may yeah. complete in quick time. Uh, Murli, uh, suppose uh, can it withstand the two cell failures? Yeah, one cell is failed, and also failure group cell is also failed. If if you implement a high redundancy, it can withstand uh, two simultaneous failures of the cell. Okay, in the normal case, it is not possible. In normal, only one cell failure can be tolerated. Oh, okay. So you both fail automatically, it will fail out to the disaster recovery area? Uh, no, DR, you are talking about standby? Yeah, that's right. Because if yeah. we have to fail and both are failed. Uh, then you have to actually, you should have implemented a DR, okay, the standby database. So once the primary storage fails, the primary site storage failure, you need to trigger um, failover, right, to the DR. So that has to be implemented. Without a DR, uh, this is not uh, possible, right? So if you want to tolerate uh, storage failures, total storage failures, you should have implemented a DR. Yeah, because of the catastrophic failure sometimes, yes. maybe the site will not Correct, correct, correct. So any disaster, you should have implemented a data guard. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. Okay. Uh, healthy discussions are happening. More questions are coming. And uh, feel free to ask questions like this. I love questions. Okay.
that is where you keep me on my toes also <laughs> okay thank you for today we will continue in tomorrow's session bye bye bye